Well, it's been some time since I recorded the first part of the second silent air compressor build. And I remembered I had this smaller Matsushita compressor, but it seemed to have an interesting issue where it'll start up when you plug it in first, when you unplug it, and then plug it back in, it won't start. Now this unit has some sort of capacitor on it over here. And first of all, we'll give it a test to make sure it will run. It's all hooked up as it was. It is running. It definitely runs, as you can hear. A little rusty, but it's been sitting out for, uh, well, just about ever. If I unplug it, it stops. I plug it back in, it just hums, and it won't start. So I'm wondering if perhaps this doohickey over here is going to be the problem. So I'm going to swap it out with the compressor, or with the uh, capacitor, excuse me, from the other compressor here. Alright, I think I'm going to actually scrap that idea because as you see, I've cut one of the wires on it and it makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. It starts without it. Even when I touch the wires back together with everything on and live. So the markings on that aren't telling me much that it might actually be some sort of capacitor. So I really don't think I want to mess with that. We're going to use the other one there, which is what I thought I was going to do from the get-go. I may still hold on to this one yet, but uh, it's been bumming around for too long at this point. I don't think I have any tubing that would even fit it, so anyway, we'll carry on over here. And here is the dead Harbor Freight air compressor. I had a video on this many moons ago. I think it was called uh, Life Begins Anew, Harbor Freight Air Compressor, something like that. So I'll show you what it does, or rather doesn't do, and what it doesn't do is actually fill up with any air. position to start with, plug it in. It's currently at about 80 pounds, just about. And it runs, but it has no load on it whatsoever. It's like completely freewheeling in there. Something went horribly wrong. So it's time to take it apart because the original compressing mechanism is no good. And you see how long it took for it to actually spin down. Alright, so for this there's six screws that you take out. There we are. All right. Um, we don't need the switch. So theoretically, that should just disconnect.
but it looks like the terminal was on there too good for now. So skip that. And <laughs> we're going to go right to removing the compressor. Now, I think just as a little lesson to us, what we'll do is open up the head and see what's going on with that first. So, I know I had opened this in the past and it did not look like there was anything obviously wrong. That was the residual air that was in the tank. I happened to pop the little uh, over pressure thingy. No job is complete without blood, so I just skinned my little my finger on that. And let's go ahead, forge right ahead, and take these screws out. Here's the top of the head. Everything looks good. And over on the compressor itself, you can see, I don't know if I can get you the right angle from here, you can see the piston Leave the uh, the cylinder wall. You can actually see uh, the scoring. I'll show you in a minute. And there's the piston. Ooh, look at this ring. Well, that could be it. Look at this piston ring. It's supposed to be split like that. Let's see if it'll focus a minute. There we are. And it's made out of like nylon. But even with all of that, and I think I showed this in the other video, look at the scoring in the cylinder wall. Pretty nice. All right, it's time to get the compressor out, the motor. That's got four screws, which happen to be a little bit loose for one reason or another. There's actually four screws and a ground. That's, that's China quality right there. Not even crimped on good. But that's all right. That's quite all right. The motor is free. There is... a small device hooked in with the motor here. And I don't know what it is. Take out the strain relief for the cord. And I will undo the ground wire. And that's almost everything. 
but there's still a number of screws holding this on. It looks like three. Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to use it or not, so I'm going to remove it for now. I should theoretically be able to reinstall it. Should anything change? Well, this looks like it's going to take a little bit of fidgeting around, so let me take a look. I'll come back. All right, I have the motor and all that removed. Here's the regulator. Behind it, where you can't see, there's a big nut, and I don't want to disturb it because that's making connection to the tank. The black plastic below it can only be removed if you undo that nut. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to Dremel it off. So, I have my Dremel with a cutoff wheel. And, cut through it but we're not all the all the way I'll try that's the problem with this kind of plastic I know I'm not going to use this piece anymore because this plastic here is just too thin to even be useful and uh, it's otherwise ridiculous so um, I'll just keep cutting here I won't uh, bore you with the details of that and I'll show you when I have it off Okay, and there is the bare tank that I can now go about fitting the new compressor to. Before I do that, I should test the new compressor with it. That'll be in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.